So it's actually the, uh, since you start from the end, this is the fourth sheet I'll be putting on, 25 thousandths. It's full width and six foot long, and it's just come out of the vacuum bend. So now it's ready to go on the, uh, on the wing. So this is the left wing. Before I bring the skin over and set it in place so I can mark out the ribs, I'm going to take and put a marks on this sheet, an inch and a quarter from the edge. And this will make sure that I get the sheet far enough over because I can use those marks to line it up, that I'll have enough material to do the one inch overlap double row of rivets. So I'm just going to put a few marks. And I'll do the same thing on the top side too. In addition to marking the overlap to prepare to put the skin on, one other thing I do is add some more bracing. So we're going to be pulling down with tie downs to hold the skin in place. And I don't want to deform the spars and bend them downwards. So I add an additional brace in here. Just temporarily. So then I also add some hooks down here for the tie downs. I'll use one per bay. There'll be three tie downs. One more thing, of course, I've been putting some tape on these nose ribs. And that's because once you put the skin on and you start sliding them around to find the holes, it tends to chew up the inside of the skin a little bit. And so this prevents that putting so many marks up in there that you get to remove later. Now I'm just going to grab the skin and put it over the top. Tie downs and slide them over. I'm going to snug these down now. Not very tight because for sure we'll need to rotate the sheet a little bit. We'll use that line that we put on the inside for vacuum forming to uh, kind of line up on the nose where we want the, the curve to end up. With the tie downs pretty loose, I can take this clamp off. We can make sure the sheet is where we want it right to left by using those marks we put on there, which are right there. I know I'm pretty close to where it needs to be rotated around the nose because these two sheets are pretty close to the same here. <clears throat> so now I can look inside and see where we actually are. I'm going to start tightening from this side because this is showing me this is skewed a little bit that way. That looks 
pretty good. I'm going to tighten the middle one. Just a little bit tighter. A little bit on this one. So I'm just on my marks there. And it looks good there. All right, looking at the marks, I could go a little tighter here first. It probably won't line up. I always end up trimming that edge anyhow. But it doesn't help hurt to get it close. That looks great. I looked on the other side. In fact, those are right lined up. I looked on the other side and they were very close. So we're down tight enough here. This one could use a little bit. And you can see by how close it is to this sheet, we're pretty much on the mark. One last thing. I'll put this in here just to hold the sheet tight. So there's a look down the top side with the sheet all in place and it's ready to be marked on the inside. So now I'm marking out the location of the ribs. So I'm just drawing onto the sheet. Bottom of the spar. Top of the bottom spar. First six or eight inches of the rib. three bays. Now I'm going to reach up through the main spar and do the same thing on the uh, bottom and on the top for the nose ribs. Now I've traced everything, I'm going to take the sheet off. So I'm going to put my temporary clamp back on. I'm going to remove all the tie downs. So this is what you end up with. So here's an outline of the main spar on the top, the main spar on the bottom, and right out of camera there is the, um, the bottom spar or the rear spar. This is the ribs, the nose ribs up here, the center ribs down here. So the center ribs, we have both a top and a bottom. So I'll find center on them and draw a line between them. Up here on the main spar, I'll find the center line down the main spar and use a square to square up where the nose rib should sit. I'm going to do that, and then after that, it'll be laying out the holes. So now I have my lines laid out for my spars, and my spars and my ribs, I should say. I'm going to take and lay out the holes. So I have my rivet band set for one and a half inches. I'll just 
just take my marker and lay out all the holes for this first rib. Now I have all the holes laid out for the ribs. <clears throat> I'm going to center punch them. With all the holes center punched, it's time to drill them. After deburring all the holes, the sheet can go back on. I went earlier to mark the ribs and the spars to make sure I get in exactly the right spot where it was. To clamp back down, and now I can start drilling the ribs from the nose at the top down. I'll do down the front, and then I'll do this back side second, and uh, clico it into position on the wing. So now with the skin all in position, you can look through the holes for the lines you put on the center of the ribs. <clears throat> oh yeah, I didn't mention that. You're supposed to put a line down the center of the rib. That way you can look in there and see when the rib is lined up with the hole. I have a stick in here too so I can push the rib around because it's not that easy to get a hold of it. Once we're there, drill and click of top to bottom. find the first hole at the top, it's a piece of cake. Okay, so now I've unclecoed the top skins, put them up out of the way, and I'm going to back drill the overlap. So I've got a little punch that I can put in the holes that exist there between the first skin and the rib, and I can, re I can align the hole and then back drill it so that it'll be in the right place. Ready? So I'm using a 12 inch drill bit to get in there and then also uh, you need an assistant to hold a piece of wood on the back side. To hold a piece of wood on the back side to keep the sheet tight against the rib. Okay, you ready? To do another one. Let me check out. That must have been my punch falling. I have to find out where it Oh, there it is. So after back drilling the, the bottom here, I re the top sheets down and un the bottom part here so I can get in here and back drill this seam all the way down. And to do that, I just have someone push it on the other side with, with a uh, piece of wood. I'm laying out the double row of rivets for the uh, overlap here, so obviously the first row is in there. So I'm just going to check this scale that's half an inch wide. 
center it up on these holes, and then mark it at three quarter. So that'll be my bottom hole. And then I'm going to do the same thing up here on the top. Remove the two Clicos. Scale it between them, between the holes. Mark out three quarters. Now I'll drill in those two spots. Okay, with the two holes marked out, I'm just going to take a center punch, punch that one. the top one and then I'm going to drill them so now I'll take the rivet fan and put it in top hole Line it up in between each one. Click it in place. Take my marker. Mark off all the rest of the other holes. So this is double row, and since this is two 25,000 sheets, these actually will get taken out and opened up to number fours. So now the sheet's installed after I trimmed the sides, and I opened up the double row rivets on the lap to number fours. I'm going to the next sheet.